Something struck a major chord with me when you just said I was filling a void. Can we talk about that? Yeah, it's, you know, the void is always on trying to feel good enough. And I think as human beings, we're constantly wanting to feel like we have value and worth. And as we intrinsically, um, if we actually understand what's actually going on is that we have deep value because of the kind of creature we are you know as a as a human being created in god's image that i'm i'm very very unique human beings are very unique to anything else in creation any any animal any plant any tree whatever we are you know we have autonomy we have self-awareness we're just very unique we have value just in the kinds of creatures that we are that are unique to us but oftentimes we take that for granted because we don't know what it's like to be a horse or a dog we're just humans and so we're looking for our worth in measuring up by what we do rather than what we are from the dawn of time my value comes in how i work there's a unique piece there too as you're thinking about that i have value because of what i am but because of what i'm in i'm able to have the capacity to do amazing things or i do amazing things and that creates who i am and that's where i derive my value Mm -hmm. right so they're still related but one comes before the other that out of our abundance of being the kind of person we are we are capable of doing amazing things but it doesn't make us who we you know it's just a it's just a which one if you have the proper perspective you already have value and what are you going to go do with it versus what are you going to do with it oh that's going to bring you value. yeah we talk about that a lot on the summit of am i hustling for my worth or am I going and crushing it because I know my worth, right? We don't grow up hearing that a lot. I feel like, or at least I didn't, you know, and, and so I was always hustling for it. And so, yeah, it's been a huge, if not one of the biggest things on the summit. What if you're not able to produce? Do you still have value? Right. So there's another question. What if, you know, what if you can't run a marathon? Do you have value? What if you can't win a race? What if you can't, contribute back to society do you, is there still worth and this is a great debate that goes on today is you only have value if you can contribute and the more you can contribute the more value you have or are we intrinsically valued and then um from that then there's things that we can give back or add value to so if, if you're a fully disabled person well you don't have legs you have less value right. or maybe just because we're both human we have value and then there's a different type of right. uh, exchange that happens uh, of what we do with it. Right. Because I can see your personal gift and your mission is to inspire people to be the best version of themselves, no matter what they were, what cards yeah. they were dealt. Bring and what you look, got. Yeah. And look at what you've done with the world. Look at how many people you're transforming and look at what you've done mm. to inspire the world. Like that is what it's all about. And that's why I love having you on here. One thing that I love that you talk about is this strategy, right? When it comes to things being hard, you replace the word, the word difficult with different. So tell us about that mm-hmm. strategy. I love yeah, that. it's, well, and I, and I always wonder when you think about, because uh, I work with a, a ministry, um, I founded a ministry called Intercept, um, and it's a deep discipleship ministry for, for, for men that don't take responsibility for their life and have gotten themselves up into uh, chronic habitual uh, behaviors that are ruining their life. And so we go through, it's like a four year program, deep discipleship. And one of the things that we say is we do hard things or what's hard have to do with it. And so sometimes people, you'll, they'll be talking about their life and they'll say, it, and it, it'll happen. You, it just slips in and you have to build an awareness to actually hear yourself say it, but you'll say, but it's hard, whatever, but it's hard. And then and I always come back and I go, hold on a second. And I know, I know it's hard, but is it too hard? And as soon as you, as soon as I ask in that question, they go, well, oh, no, it's not too hard. 
and it it's like you're on this one side of the coin and you can't see over the edge and you go but it's hard but it's hard but it's hard and, and it's the subconscious sort of not taking responsibility and ownership and as soon as you say well is it too hard well immediately then it, it flips the script and you're like well no it's not too hard you know and it's like exactly it's not too hard it's possible it's going to be work and it's going to be worth it well actually you have to determine if it's going to be worth it before you do the work. Sometimes we we talk about things that are hard, but they're they're not necessarily hard. They're just unfamiliar, mm-hmm. or they're they're different. The first time that you were learning to drive a car, you could say that was hard. Mm-hmm. But you every day you go get in the car and and you drive somewhere and it's without even a second thought. It's not hard anymore. It's but it's still driving. Actually, you're probably doing way more complicated things driving as an adult than you did as a kid but it's easy why is it easy oh because it's familiar right so hard is irrelevant and difficult is irrelevant it's just new Mm -hmm. give yourself time to um to practice it there's another equation that i i I mentor a lot of folks and, and i build i have a coaching team and i help people build their own coaching practices they say, well, I just don't have the confidence in that. And I was like, well, do you know how the confidence equation works? And they're like, what? And I was like, oh, yeah, you don't start with confidence. You end with confidence. I says, what happens when you don't know how to do something and you have learned to do it? What did you do? And they say, well, practice or repetition. I said, yeah. So you start with activity. As you do something over and over again, you'll get better at it. That that builds competency. So you become more competent the more you do stuff. And when you're competent with something, confidence shows up. It's just part of it. But you don't start with confidence. You start with a vision and practice. And then it builds to competency and then to confidence. Mm -hmm. I've heard you say, too, that we equate easy with good. So easy equals good and hard Mm. equals bad. And it's like, where do we get that wiring, right? Like you said, it's just different. Yeah. Just like riding a bike. And so when it comes to emotional eating, you know, we think, oh God, take away the food and it's going to be hard. And it's like, you know, how to make peace with that, that it's just different. And we'll get into that. Mm-hmm. One of my boys was always, he was looking that if it was easy, he had a subconscious um, concept or truth that he built that if it's easy, it's equals good. And if it's hard, it equals bad. And as he's matured, he's actually realized that if it's, we don't say hard or good, if it's challenging and worthwhile and makes me better, mm-hmm. it's good. If it's not challenging and doesn't make me better, then it may not be good, it may not be worthwhile. So it's, a, it's yep. a change to everything that has value in your life I guarantee the harder it was, the more value it became when you did it. I guarantee it. 